So thankfully these days, a lot of good information is being spread around about acoustic absorption, acoustic treatment, and I just want to add to this collection of uh, information on the internet because back in the day we had those home recording books and things where there was a lot of misinformation going around. People did a lot of weird stuff that didn't necessarily work. And thankfully today, things are starting to go on the right path. There's still people that are misinformed, but hopefully we can start steering you guys in a better direction. So in this video, we're really just gonna focus on absorption because that's the starting point for anybody that gets into treating a room, whether it's your home studio or music room, home theater, anything, a real recording studio, you need to start with your absorption. Um, there is also diffusion which is great. There's QRD diffusers, which are mathematically designed objects, basically, that shoot sound in different directions in the room, makes a room sound bigger, and those go along great with absorption when using the right ways. We're just gonna talk about absorption today, and that's gonna get rid of any of your standing waves, any of your flutter echoes. Now, one of my favorite ways, and I'm gonna talk about this, is how we can apply absorption while maintaining some character of a room with some room sound, because we don't want to record in an anechoic chamber where, there, where it's just total sterile environment. Because I mean, for home theater, that might be better. Still, you want you want something because a dead, a totally dead space is just not good for music, instruments, drums, guitar, whatever, any, whatever it may be. We want to preserve something. And what we usually want to preserve is the higher frequencies where it's just got some shine and some glimmer to it. It's not, there's no flutter echoes or nothing. We're gonna talk about how we can do that. The first material we got on the list is foam, acoustic foam. Now wow, these companies have made a ton of money, a killing off of selling you this foam, which is so easy to make. It's an expanding product. You, you dump it in a mold and it just, and then there it's done. But the reason it sucks so bad, one is the density is so low and then two, it's so thin, there's just nothing to it. Now, to understand why other materials and methods may be great, we need to understand why foam sucks first. What that does to your room, if I can draw a room, let's say, let's say uh, this line here represents your room untreated, okay? So can you see that right at the top there, that blue one, there's your room untreated. Let's add some foam to it. Let's just plaster the walls with foam. Let's say, well, let me add some frequencies. We got 50 Hertz. We got, we got uh, 500 Hertz. Then we got uh, 2,500 Hertz. And we got 10,000 Hertz and up. 10,000 Hertz and up. So, 50 hertz, 500 hertz, 2500 hertz, 10,000 hertz and up. Now, if, you're, if you've been messing with music and mixing a lot, you should know about what all those sound like. That's pretty important. So, here's what, if we plaster a room with foam, here's what it's going to do to our, to our frequency response of the room. Here's, here's untreated, <coughs> and then we just come in with foam. It's not going to do anything at 50 hertz. It's not going to do anything at 500 hertz. And then at about 2,500 hertz, way, way, way up. I mean, it may be 1,000 hertz. It's going to start coming in and doing something. So pretty much all we've done with acoustic foam is make our room sound dull. We took away all the high frequencies. We did nothing to the mid range, we did nothing to the mid bass, did nothing to the low end. It's all muddy and now it's dull. That's basically the exact opposite of what you wanna achieve when you need to go to a treaty room. <laughs> so this next section, I'm pretty much just gonna lump these two materials together, rigid fiberglass and mineral wool, because they all offer types of absorption coefficients that are very similar. There's different densities and there's different uh, thicknesses of the materials, and I'll explain that in a bit, but Let's, for example, use a two inch thick panel of uh, rigid fiberglass or mineral wool. Like I said, they're pretty much the same type of material. It's just fibers compressed uh, and heated and treated and mineral wool is our, like fired at 2000 degrees. It's some crazy material, but let me erase what this did to our room, the crappy foam. And draw another 
<laughs> to draw another baseline. Here's our baseline for our room. I'm gonna go ahead and add a, let me add a two, 250. 250 hertz. I kind of want to add a, uh, let's add a 1500 too. 1500 hertz. So we got 50, 250, 500, uh, 1500, 2500, and 10, but let's add a 5000. 5000 hertz. This makes us, I pulled this out of my butt, but it's just a nice little frequency chart. If we know foam sucks, it just takes the high end out. Here's our blue line. That's our base point for our room. Now let's, <laughs> let's draw a curve for our rigid fiberglass. Now, if you just have two inch, we're just talking about two inch thick mineral wool or rigid fiberglass panels. We're gonna plaster those on the wall in this scenario. Nothing else, we're not making base traps. So with that said, we're not gonna have a whole lot of base absorption. It does have coefficient down, down to about 100 hertz. Or there we're at 50 there, there's 250 hertz. This stuff really starts working by about 200, 250 hertz. So there it's about half. So we're not absorbing a lot of base, but by about 300 to uh, 300 hertz or so, that stuff's 100% absorption. And you can see with just these two inch thick panels of Owens Corning 703 or uh, Rock, Rock, Rock Soul, Rock Board or whatever they got, we pretty much, we just deaden our space up. Plaster that stuff on the walls is, sounds like an Anna Coke chamber now. <laughs> now, that's all right. It's not, that's better. That's better than the foam. We still got some muddy base, probably, because you got to make some base traps, which is a just a different way of applying this material. And I'll talk about that in a second. But let's talk about what we can do. What we can do to preserve some high frequencies and make it sound more like a room without all this mud. So what you can do to make that material still keep the room sound, some higher frequencies, a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of glimmer for music, recording drums and guitars, saxophones, whatever the heck you want to record so it doesn't sound like you, just sound like a dead, crappy, sterile space. We put a membrane in front of this material. If you ever heard of Owens Corning uh, FRK, it's a foil reinforced or fiberglass, rigid fiberglass, just got foil on one side. Point that out. You can also put some plastic on it. As any type of membrane on the front will start re reflecting high frequencies. So it'll do the same stuff all the way down here, illustrated by my green line here. We got up to about 2500 hertz. It's going to start reflecting again. Now that might have been a crappy line. Doesn't it just like increase. Let's start reflecting. Something like that. So now. With a membrane on the front of our material, we've reflected these higher frequencies, and now we got we got some room sound. We got a little bit of instruments that sound shimmery, a little bit, a little bit cymbals. Got some more, you know, more high end to them, and it all comes through your microphones when you when you do this too. You can hear it, definitely can hear this. <laughs> so, essentially, what we've done is we have we basically just mid scooped our room, pretty much acoustically. And we still got some bass, some very low frequencies that might be muddy. And let me tell you, that really depends on your room size. If you got a square room, you're gonna have some really bad room modes. It's like I got, a, I had, was recording a square room once and I had a 50 hertz mode. It was just 50 hertz was so loud. You go up to 60 hertz and there's nothing there. 70 hertz, there's nothing. 80 hertz starts to come back in. So just the size of your room can really start screwing things up down low. <laughs> but uh, it was just the material though. We, that's what we want to achieve. I'm telling you, you don't want to achieve this at your like your first reflection points though. With your monitors, where you're listening to stuff, maybe even a home theater might be. Some of these might be good here and there, but you do want to absorb. You're better off with just the flat. Just do it, cause do it. Kill them all. Kill all the frequencies. Uh, <laughs> Acoustic talica. Kill kill them all in some certain situation. But for music, I love this. I love putting the membrane on the front of the material because it just brings back so that cymbal shine and stuff and it's, it makes drums sound crazy. <clears throat> but that's basically what I want to talk about with this. I'm going to show you physically some materials. I found a cheaper material that you're going to love. 
over here in the corner of this junky junk pile room here, I got this stuff. This is the stuff right here, guys. Owens Corning Thermofiber Mineral Wool. Who even knew Owens Corning started making mineral wool? I don't think they're doing it for long because I found this on clearance. Now, an alternate is basically the uh, Roxol Comfort Bats, okay? Roxol Comfort Bats are selling them at Home Depot, and they also have the Safe and Sound, Roxol Safe and Sound. But, and they're similar materials, but this stuff right here, let me tell you, these panels are super dense. About the thickness, about they're three and a half inches thick, and they're about the weight of more that they weigh more than a two inch thick panel of regular mineral wool. Let me get one out. Now out here I got a package of these opened. And here's what it looks like. These are three and a half inches thick. Now the absorption coefficients on these, because they're thicker, are a lot better than the two inch. And dude, this stuff right here, seriously. This feels as dense as the two inch legit panels. This is better than the safe and sound stuff in the comfort bet from rock from Roxel. And I got this stuff on clearance. Now, <laughs> good luck finding it in, uh, anywhere. Cause I've never seen it anywhere other than this uh, place called Menards over here. But you can get that safe and sound or the comfort bet by Roxel in, in most homes, home depots and stuff now. And it's very similar. I don't think it's quite as dense as this. Because this stuff is, I mean, if you look at that, that's just like a panel of uh, regular uh, rock board from Roxel. Stuff is heavy duty. There's only five of these in a package, and I swear the package weighs as much as a, a panel, a pack of 12 of the uh, Safe and Sounds or the Comfort Bats from Roxel. And even on those, that's what I was going to use, the Comfort Bats or the uh, Safe and, actually the Comfort Bats. And the coefficients on those are awesome too, even way down low. So I can only imagine that these are better as well, because since they're denser. So I paid, uh, they were on clearance for $16.99 a piece for five of these pieces. So I got a pretty good deal. I've had the two inch mineral wool boards. And so that's why I can tell you this is basically the same density to my to my hands here which is pretty awesome it's pretty freaking cool and here's a look at the uh panels i'm putting those in this is the basic frame and over here in my living room i have one of those is covered in plastic so i'm covering these in plastic as the membrane and then i'm putting a uh, canvas on, over them okay it's getting it's dark in here i'm sorry for the crappy video but i'm working on these right now and i'm actually got a whole nother video of how to make these guys and you can check that out right there there's a link it's probably popping up on your youtubes right there but here's one of the uh more finished panels let me step my camera down a little bit i was using my dry erase markers just a second ago and here i put the canvas on front of them you see got that stuff inside of them here and these are my panels. These are what I'm putting up in my house. And these got the plastic under here. So I'm gonna use those out in the living room for recording drums and other instruments. Now I promised I would talk to you a little bit about bass traps. Now what those are, it's basically the same type of material we've been talking about this whole time. Just apply it to the corners of your room because that's where bass tends to build up is in the corners of the room. If you ever have a subwoofer or something in a room, you go stand in the middle of the room, there's no bass, nothing, hardly, but you go in the corner, it's like boom, boom, boom. So that's where your bass, low frequencies tend to be, and that's where you can apply your th most thickness of material in those corners, in columns, diagonals, whatever you need. Uh, so get something like six, 10 inches thick. There's also different types of bass traps. There's uh, Hemholtz resonators, which is uh, basically like a, panel on the front with material behind it not touching it and you can tune that to absorb a specific frequency and i might uh experiment with building some of those since i do have a couple very low frequency room modes that are louder than other others in the space i'm trying to work in and mix in so i might experiment with some some type of uh, bass traps that i can tune to a specific frequency so those are something worth looking into as well now you might be wondering where do you apply this stuff at what where do you make the most use of of these panels at in your room well for me i love dead ceilings 
you want to start to get your ceiling. It's like you're playing outside. There's no reflections from your ceiling. And that varies a little bit because in a music room, I still do like to reflect some of those high frequencies, especially above drums. If you can absorb that mid bass, the mids and stuff, but still reflects on those highs, you get that, you get all this attack and this presence uh, from cymbals and drums and stuff that you wouldn't otherwise. And it makes drums sound really cool. Like if you wonder how they get professional recordings and stuff like this room sound that sounds so good, that's how they do it. They're absorbing these professional studios are absorbing the lower frequencies, reflecting some highs and you can get, it makes it so much easier to get a mix that's not as muddy and has, but still has some character to it that way. But in a mixing room, let's get a dead ceiling going first. No, no membrane on the panels. Not usually. I mean, maybe in the back where people are listening, get it sounding a little bit roomy, something to it. But where you're mixing, dead all around. Just absorb everything where you're at, pretty much. Um, and then that's, that's pretty much one way to apply that. And we're, you definitely want some diffusion somewhere, too. I mean... You don't you don't need it but you can get into into that as you go along if you want to experiment with that now building uh diffusers and designing them that's a quite a task there are programs that'll help you calculate diffusers and things and in the future subscribe to me because i'm going to get in that stuff really heavy duty i'm going to build a 1d and 2d diffusers which the 1d ones just reflect horizontally they have slats and then the 2D ones reflect in all directions, and they those are the real crazy ones you've probably seen uh, in famous pictures, famous studios and stuff. They look crazy, but they're pretty cool too, so I'm going to get into that stuff.